Now, back to the Rosemary Kiefel Show, here on CFUN, 1410 AM. Talk with attitude. Well, when I was brought up, I was the youngest of four children, and uh, by the time I came along, my parents weren't really that strict with me, but ironically enough, I was a prude for quite a long time, and... Uh, <laughs> Others may differ now, but anyway, no, I was a prude, and I lost my virginity quite late. It was more like 21, but the day that I actually had my first solid, memorable one-night stand, and it was a truly a one-night stand, that's how I viewed it, I actually felt empowered. It's just incredible when I remember this. And I'm, I'm telling this story because our next guest will have lots to say on this subject, and nobody's not heard of Naomi Wolf, who has written international bestsellers, The Beauty Myth, Fire with Fire, and her recent book is Promiscuities. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Rosemary. So I, I need your take uh, on that little story, my little anecdote. I, I feel I know you so intimately already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and like millions of other listeners, too. <laughs> um, well, gosh, I mean, I would need to know more, but mm. it, it, it doesn't surprise me. I guess what's striking about the story you told is how rare it is to hear a woman do what you just did, which is own part of her sexual history and not very ladylike part in conventional terms, um, so publicly. And that's, I, you know, I applaud you for that. And um, that's one of the things that I set out to do in Promiscuities, um, which also tells, uh, you know, my own sexual history in the first person, just as you so bravely told a bit of your sexual history, um, partly so that uh, other women who are uh, feeling right now alone or burdened with their own sexual coming-of-age stories um, can uh, look back on those 16-year-olds that, that we were and, and uh, have a little more wisdom and compassion about what we were going I, I never felt, as a teenager, um, pressure to actually have intercourse. I was confused about what was first base, second base, third base. <laughs> You know, if, if you can touch my breasts, then what part of your body can I touch? <laughs> Good morning, Michael. How are you this morning? I want to know why you let the theme run out before you come on. <laughs> That's what I want. Why do you make the orchestra play to the last note? I want to know why you're yelling. Am I yelling? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what a great day for stories. It is. It's a lot going on. Absolute tonnage. I couldn't be happier. And we're going to talk about a few later. We will talk about Greenpeace, the fact that they're launching another campaign. Despicable. It in is Europe, actually despicable. In Europe, where we get 11% of, of all the pulp and paper sold from this province is sold in Europe, and it's starting in Britain. And, but this is right when our economy is going in the dumpsters, taking a nosedive, and Greenpeace is deciding to up their ante in their fight. Yeah, it's, it's very despicable. It, it is actually, and uh, along that same note, we will also talk about the fact that fur is coming back into fashion, and I'm all for that. Are you really? Yes, and we'll also talk about the doctor strike. You know, we may wind up disagreeing on virtually everything this morning. It'll be great. Well, let's start up by disagreeing on when we should actually start talking with the theme music. Okay, let's do that right <laughs> off the bat. Now, you see, the, the thing of it is that this is your show, and I guest host on it. And so I have to wait for you to say good morning, because the announcer says the Rosemary Keevil Show. If I jump in, people will think somehow or another that uh, I'm either trying to shove you off the stage unceremoniously. Or I've been taking some pretty heavy uh, or your hormones. Or, or your testosterone. I mean, you know, your boy-like qualities will have turned into man-like qualities. I'm glad you know your place anyway. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Most important. Which is thing. in the back seat, possibly the trunk. <laughs>